Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Gigabyte motherboard. This is the Gigabyte Z87X D3H. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a Z87 motherboard, so that's the chipset that's being used. It's uh, got the 1150 socket, so it's designed for Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. Bear in mind this board is not backwards compatible with Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge, so socket 1155 CPUs need not apply. Only 1150 CPUs that are codenamed Haswell. Uh, this is an ultra durable 5 plus motherboard, so you have lots of ultra-ness available. Ultra cool with the all new heat sink design, ultra performance with IR digital CPU power design, ultra safe because there is a dual BIOS UEFI, uh, and then you get, also get 10 USB 3.0 ports, which are also ultra. Flipping around here to the back, we have uh, lots of stuff being shown by Gigabyte. So uh, I'll quickly glance at a few of them. 15 micron gold plated CPU socket. You get an Intel integrated NIC with uh, high electrostatic discharge protection, which uh, kind of goes throughout the board. ESD USB port protection, uh, long lifespan, all solid caps, high temperature protection uh, via the MOSFETs that they're using. You do get SLI and crossfire support. You can do two-way SLI or quad SLI with two dual GPU and video graphics cards. You can do, do uh, single, two-way or three-way crossfire X configurations or quad, quad crossfire X configurations if you're using dual GPU AMD cards. Uh, you also have on-off charging function that's available. That's pretty handy. You can charge stuff even while your computer is off. And then up here, a uh, little info on the international rectifier uh, digital power stage integrated circuits. Uh, which they're using for digital power delivery for the CPU as well as the memory. Uh, you also have a, a glass fabric PCB for humidity protection, power failure protection via anti-surge integrated circuits, five fan connectors on the boards, six SATA 3 ports. I'll go over all that stuff once we get out of the box. There's a quick layout of the I.O. I'm going to talk about that too. So uh, why don't I go ahead and move on to accessories. Inside the box, uh, first off, we have your Gigabyte Ultra Durable uh, user's manual. This is very important to keep on hand while you're doing your builds. You have stuff in here like layout of the motherboard pointing out what's what, a block diagram which I'm always a fan of, as well as all the uh, components that are integrated onto the board and some instructions for installation and that sort of thing. You also get a driver disk. It's generally best to go to the Gigabyte website to download the latest versions of these dri drivers rather than using the ones on the disk, but that disk can be very handy to get your network up and running so you can download the rest of the drivers. Uh, here's your serial ATA cables. You get a total of four of them. Uh, you get black, uh, all black uh, cable designs. They have little clasps on the end to hold them in place. They're SATA revision one, two, or three compatible. You get two that have straight plugs on both ends and then two that have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angled plug on the other end. Here is your I.O. shield. Uh, it is color-coded and labeled, so you can tell which inputs and outputs are which. And it also has the squishy electromagnetic shielding on the back, which is electromagnetic shielding and also does a much poorer job of cutting you like the all-metal ones do. Uh, here's your SLI uh, bridge, and it is a flexible one, so you can uh, use it with different uh, spacing for your video cards. Um, if you're going with a crossfire configuration, those bridges are usually shipped with the graphics card itself. You also get a multilingual installation guidebook. In case English is not your first language, it looks like we have uh, English, Dutch, Spanish, French, and one that was in the Portuguese, and... Italiano, nice. And there's one other accessory. It's kind of tucked away in here. I'll see if I can get it out. And that is the ubiquitous Gigabyte case badge. And now here's a look at the motherboard itself. As you can see, Gigabyte has gone uh, with a fairly pleasing black, silver, and blue color scheme for this board. Some blue highlights and some of the uh, heat sinks right there. A flat black PCB, which looks quite nice in my personal opinion. Um, and I did want to flip this around for you guys so you can get a close look at the PCB itself as well as the mounting points for the heat sinks. They're all mounted with uh, spring-loaded Phillips head screws, so not too difficult to remove those if you want to clean them in the future or uh, offer the possibility of removing those to put on water cooling, which is always a possibility. Uh, apart from that, I did want to point out the fan headers while we've got a nice wide shot here. So two up here at the top, a uh, third one, uh, those are both CPU fan headers, CPU A and CPU B, uh, a system fan header right here above the PCI Express slots, uh, one more down here on the bottom right, and then one more right here just left of center. 
So down here is that system fan header that I just pointed out, system fan 3. Next to that you have your front panel connectors. They're uh, encased in this little block right there. They're color coded inside. You've also got a little chart there down below to tell you what's what. You can also reference your motherboard manual if you want to clarify. Above that you have a clear CMOS header right there. Just bring your own jumper and you can pop that on to clear your CMOS. You can also see your dual BIOSes right here. Uh, the little chips for them. They are uh, hardwired to the board, soldered onto the board. However, the backup BIOS, I can say from personal experience, uh, it can be a lifesaver in certain situations. Uh, a couple USB 2.0 headers right here. Each of those will support two USB 2.0 front or rear panel ports. Uh, there's that other system fan header that I already mentioned. Here's a trusted platform module header, which is more used for security and enterprise environments. Uh, you have a comm header right there if you have a legacy comm device you need to get connected. And then over here you have your front panel audio as well as some SPDIF in and output headers located to the above and to the right of it. Uh, along the left side of the board here we have some of the uh, components which are handling your audio, including your Realtek chip right there. It's a Realtek ALC892 codec chip. Uh, it supports 7.1 channel audio. And then, of course, you also have the SPDIF in and out via those headers that we just passed over. Uh, next up, let's talk about PCI Express because you have quite a few PCI Express ports located all along here. We'll start off with the short ones. That's these. Uh, so these are X1 ports. You have three of them in total. Uh, those are all going to be PCI Express Gen 2. Uh, also further down on the board, you have a legacy PCI uh, uh, connector, which is used for older PCI devices, of course, uh, which Gigabyte has actually added onto this board because the 87 no longer has uh, PCI support. Uh, but that's there. So if you have, say, an older uh, sound card or that sort of thing, you can still plug it in. And then lastly, we have the three uh, larger PCI Express ports, two of them down here, and then one that's further up. Uh, that is what you're probably going to be using for your graphics card if you're going with a discrete graphics card solution. The top one up here is uh, PCI Express uh, Gen 3. I should say the, the top one and the, uh, the fourth, wait, no, one, two, three, four, the fifth. So second and fifth slot right here are PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. So those are going to be your best bet for a single or a two-way. Uh, graphics card solution. Top one will run at X16 if you're only populating that. If you populate this slot, it will run at X16. I'm sorry, it'll run at X8 and X8. And if you populate the bottom slot, uh, which is actually routed over off of the uh, chipset, uh, this one will run at X4, and this one is also going to be PCI Express Gen 2 rather than Gen 3, but you can use that for a third uh, Crossfire card if you're going to go with a three-way Crossfire X configuration. Over to the right, uh, we have the Gigabyte logoed heatsink cover, which is picking up some nice glare, but there's a close look at it. The Z87 chipset is located underneath that, which is uh, controlling quite a few things on the board. But the one I want to talk about is going to be these serial ATA ports right there. So they're right angled, which is uh, quite common and also very handy these days. And the nice thing about Z87 is it gives you a total of six all PCI, I'm, I'm sorry, all SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second ports. So uh, plenty of connectivity there for SSDs. You also get RAID support for RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Uh, do bear in mind that you do have a throughput limitation here uh, from the chipset. So if you are, for instance, considering going with four or more SSDs in a RAID configuration, you might actually be limited bandwidth wise. Uh, so that is something to consider if you're going for a higher end RAID configuration. But given the price point of this motherboard, chances are we're only going to be seeing people plug in what, maybe one, two, or three of those. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Further up the board, uh, we have a couple USB 3.0 headers. So this one right here, the red one, is going to support uh, the faster charging as well as always on charging solutions. So that's going to be your best bet for writing over to a front panel USB 3.0 connector. You have an additional one right here that has a cover on it. Uh -huh. So you can get even more USB 3.0 connect connectivity, which is always a good thing. Moving up the board a bit further, we got a, our main 24-pin uh, power connector. So that's going to be, of course, the power from your power supply. And then to the left of that, we have these very long slots that you can see. Those are all for your DDR3 memory. Uh, this is a dual-channel uh, configuration, so you're going to want to at least purchase your memory in a set of two identical matching uh, sticks. You have official support from Intel for DDR3 1600 speeds on this platform, and you can even overclock beyond that. Uh, that your mileage may vary, of course, but uh, we've seen the uh, Haswell chips actually hitting 
20, uh, 2,000 to even 3,000, of course, again, overclocking is always going to depend on your chip as well as the memory that you're using. So bear that in mind. But if you do populate all of those with 8 gigabyte DIMMs, you can get up to 32 gigs of memory on this board, which is quite a lot. To the left of the memory, we have the uh, CPU socket. So again, socket 1150 for Intel's fourth generation core processors, also known as Haswell. Uh, and again, you have all digital power delivery for that CPU. So uh, around here, we can see uh, the heat sinks as well as some of the uh, power delivery elements, such as the chokes right there, capacitors right there, and then MOSFETs, which are actually located underneath the, those heat sinks because those do tend to be some of the hotter components on the board. But some uh, decently sized heat sinks right there to keep those uh, cooled down particularly if you're going to be doing any overclocking with a K-SKU processor. Finally, up here at the top, we have an 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector, so never forget that one. You're going to need to route that cable over also from your power supply to get that set up. And uh, finally, we're going to close with our inputs and outputs on this side of the board right over here. So uh, first off, you got a combo port right here. That's a PS2 for a mouse or a keyboard, uh, which is handy if you've got an older mouse or a keyboard that you want to plug in. Uh, you've also got USB 2, of course, so a couple USB 2.0 connectors right there. Since Haswell processors are almost always going to have an iGPU or integrated GPU, you can run this board without a discrete graphics card, which means that you can use these video outs to do video out which is always nice. Uh, so you got a DVI uh, dual link right there. Uh, you've also got HDMI uh, 1.4a version right there that can actually do up to 4K resolutions at 24 hertz, or it can do more reasonable resolutions such as 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz. Uh, you can do 1920 by 1200 out of any of these ports. Then you've also got a VGA connector right there in case you have an older uh, monitor that still uses analog VGA. You can just plug that in and get going. Uh, Oh, also bear in mind, this uh, DVI port does not have analog connectors, so uh, if you have more than one VGA, you will need to find another solution, or maybe go with a discrete graphics card. Uh, here are three, I'm sorry, six more USB 3.0 ports, 246, uh, and that equals a total of 10 for the board, so uh, four available via those internal headers, uh, six more available back here. Uh, I do want to point out that those uh, USB 3.0, uh, apart from the two on the red USB uh, header for the front panel, uh, the rest of them are routed through the native USB 3 controller on the chipset, uh, and that's just using a couple uh, USB 3.0 hubs, uh, actually Renaissance UPD 720210 USB 3.0 hubs. So that's uh, how Gigabyte has managed to get so much USB 3.0 on this board. There's your Intel NIC, uh, which is always an uh, excellent option for compatibility and reliability. And then finally, you have your analog outputs, as well as your mic in as well as your optical Toslink digital output, uh, and that's for your Renaissance 7.1 uh, audio. I'm sorry, Realtek ALC 892 7.1 channel audio. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Gigabyte Z87X D3H motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and leave me some feedback down in the comment area below. Maybe hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.